What's up guys? Today I thought I'd do a video on two handguns that look very similar to each other. We have the Ruger Mark III and we have the Type 14 Nambu pistol. This is what the Japanese used during World War II. And as the story goes, Bill Ruger got a hold of one of these and liked it enough that he wanted to make a 22 variant. Um, how true that is, I'm not sure, but that's the story at least. And they do look very similar aesthetically. The operating system is a bit different. Um, so this is a just a, a direct blowback handgun that's hammer fired. This one is a delayed recoil striker fire. So the operating systems are different, but they do they both have a um, reciprocating bolt inside of a receiver, not a slide. So that is one similarity between these two. But um, this has the bolt exposed on top and it ejects on top. Whereas on the Ruger's, they eject out the side. The grip angle between the two handguns are very similar. Honestly, both of them are really awesome to hold. But on this gun, it's got this little retention spring on here. It's designed to make the magazine hard to pull out. And they have accomplished this. On the Ruger, they went in a completely different uh, direction. I got a Ruger Mark IV right here. And it's got a spring-loaded plunger that kind of shoots the magazine out with some force. They want you to be able to change the magazine on this one. Whereas on the uh, Type 14, you have to really want that magazine out of it. I will say the Nambu is a little slimmer, whereas the uh, Ruger is a little fatter, but that's probably because of the wood grips. The magazines are very similar to each other. Actually, when I was loading this handgun, um, it felt like I was loading the same gun, even though the uh, pull-down lever is on the right side with the Nambu and it's on the left side with uh, the Mark series. Well, anyways, when I was loading these handguns, I actually shot this one and my Mark IV on the same day. and. Uh, it really felt like I was shooting a smaller 22 caliber Nambu pistol, honestly. When you're loading up the magazine, it, they feel very similar. I mean, they look very similar. So that's one cool thing about the handgun is the magazines feel almost identical. So we got the grip angle, the magazines look similar, and the trigger. Whew. This one wins. This has maybe a two and a half pound trigger. It actually scared Alex when he shot it because he wasn't prepared for how light this trigger pull is. Um, but I will say this has a pretty good trigger and my Ruger Mark uh, IV has a phenomenal trigger. So they do have that in common. Uh, the trigger guard is a lot smaller on the, uh, the Rugers than the Nambu. Um, on the Nambu, they wanted you to be able to put a gloved finger through the uh, trigger guard. So that's why it's enlarged on the later versions. Um, also, one thing I, I didn't mention when I was talking about the bolt is I find on these, it's a lot easier to charge them. So on the Ruger Mark IV, it's got really good serrations back here. So it's really easy to pull back on the bolt. And on the, the Type 14, it is so easy to slip off of it. It's kind of gnarled back here. And I have to put my finger in this gap between the receiver and the uh, uh, charging bolt, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have to put my fingers right there to charge it because if I just do this, I, I, I legitimately slip off of it. So that is one thing that the Ruger Mark series has over the Nambu is way better uh, texturing and ergonomics. The uh, mag release is in a very similar place on both these handguns, but like I said, this one doesn't drop free. The safety on this gun is kind of ridiculous. So you have to take this and flip it all the way around for safety. This shuts off all ability to uh, cock the gun or pull the trigger. So it's pr completely locked up when you have it on safe. Also, don't, don't dry fire this gun. I learned a couple lessons the hard way. So it's a striker fire and it has this very small, brittle firing pin on it, and I broke it. 
It was actually the very first time I ever dry fired this gun. I thought maybe I can get away with it one time. I wanted to see where the uh, safety engaged um, because I was kind of curious how far you had to turn this thing before it engaged. I was wondering if it would be around here, but actually right there is when it's disengaged. And I dry fired it one time, literally just one time, and it broke. Now this is lesson number two. There's two sizes of strikers. There's long and there's short. And if you can tell, I got the wrong one. So yeah, a little lesson that I learned. So <laughs> anyways, <laughs> lesson learned, right? So part availability is definitely not there with this gun. I, I was able to find the shorts. They were a lot harder to find than the longs, but I had to go on eBay to get it. So I guess that's one advantage that the Mark series has is you can find replacement parts all day long and for cheap. The sights on both these guns, if you're comparing the three to the, uh, the 14, uh, they're both very similar. They black on black sights and they're actually pretty good sights. I'm actually impressed for a old handgun like this, how good, of the, uh, yeah, how good the sights are on both these pistols. If you start looking at my Mark IV though, the advantage goes to this pistol. They're, um, they really light up well. We got a insert, an orange insert at the front and a green one at the back. They really stand out. But I will say between these two pistols, they're very similar and very good sights, honestly. Um, by the way, uh, I, I think I sidetracked a little bit. Uh, the safety on this gun is a little button on the side over here, whereas on this one, it's a lever and then they improved it on the four. It's kind of like a 1911 safety right back here. So that is a huge advantage to the uh, Mark IVs over the Type 14, because the safety on this thing is just awful. Also, the, uh, these guns all have, well, at least the Mark III and the Mark IV have slide release or bolt release, I should say. This has nothing. So when you put the magazine in, safety. It locks back, but it locks back on the uh, magazine. So if I pull it out, which is very difficult, you know, uh, okay, we're just going to do this simply. I'm going to just push on the follower. But see, as I push on the follower, the bolt goes home. Oh, man. You see what I'm saying? Uh, that's kind of a pain. I really wanted to put these two pistols side by side. I haven't seen anybody do a video like this because they're so very similar um, in appearance at least. And I thought it'd be a really fun video to make. Also, what do you guys think of this new setup? Uh, I have this little desk raised up so I could stand behind it and have the guns in front of me. That way my hands are not like uh, hiding the gun. So in my reviews, I hold it like this or, or I'm holding it like this and it kind of hides details of the gun. If I just have it here on the desk like this, I could wave my hands around like crazy back here and you could get every detail of the handgun in front of me. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think of that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I got a lot of cool stuff coming up in the future. So stay tuned for that.